everybody. Andy Roman here. Welcome to Get Real with Andy, episode blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Listen, today's topic is anger. And I know anger is a hot button for lots of people. And anger is like fire, which in and of itself is not bad, but can be used badly and cause a lot of damage. If I had a torch, I could burn you with it. I could burn myself. I could burn this whole place down. Or I could hold the torch high and illuminate. I could light the hearth fire and warm things. I could cook some nice hot soup for us. So I'm saying it's not innately bad. It's what we do with it. But, you know, some people actually uh, divide the emotions into good emotions and bad emotions. And I think there's some danger in that. And I also think it's not universal. I think we have almost universally not handled a lot of them well. But I think what's bad about emotion is when it gets stuffed. That wreaks havoc or wreaks havoc because stuffed emotions tend to leak out and then we act out. That's when anger turns into rage and we do, do stupid things that hurt other people. On the other hand, when we don't express our anger, we tend to turn it inwards. And even as Sigmund Freud said, we will turn that anger turn inwards into depression. So we got to do something with it. We didn't, we didn't really make it up. You know what I'm saying? It's part of the original design. Babies get angry. Little babies. If they're crying because they're hungry or they're wet or they're uncomfortable. They're crying. And if you don't come in a decent amount of time, some babies will get angry. And you can tell because they arch their back and they're screaming and they just look angry. So I'm saying that it is actually part of the original design that we have anger. There's no getting rid of anger. I tell you, the people that try to get rid of the anger response, actually get rid of it, those are the people who get sick. Then there are some other people who really have spiritual sounding reasons to not be angry because anger is you know in the category of bad and it is true anger tends to bring up defenses people feel attacked and then it does come up in times of adversarial conditions for sure so i'm not saying anger is easy it's it's difficult i would say I am saying it's good when it's used properly. Anger is like rocket fuel, which if it's not in a rocket, will just combust whatever is, you know, it's put on and ignited. But when it's in a rocket, rocket fuel, it's supposed to be lit and then it propels us. I know I get stuff done when I'm when I'm angry. I I I stop procrastinating a lot of times. It takes getting angry not at myself per se, but just just to get my mojo going, to get things done. Stop putting this off. And also in terms of the spiritual thing, or the I heard the story, saw it on TV, the movies about Jesus, that when he went into the temple and saw these people changing money, selling sacrificial animals and doing all this in the, the temple, he didn't go over to them and just say, you know, by the way, this is inappropriate. Could you please, you know, leave the premises? No, he got all lit up. He got all excited and angry. And he even cursed, according to the story, he even cursed at them. And he called them vipers. There are some pictures where they show him with a whip, where he's actually, he used a strap on them as he chased them out and knocked their tables over. And so, you know, I'm thinking, if Jesus can do it, you know, there must be something right about it. I, I actually think like that, just based on who we say and believe Jesus might have been. Um, and I'm, I'm suggesting that righteous anger, when there's a real violation, righteous anger is an appropriate response. And let me ask you, what are the reasons? What are the biological reasons for anger? They fall into several categories. One is if your needs are not met, like when you're a child, 
when your boundaries have been violated and uh, when there is a sense of betrayal where somebody has turned on you and suddenly they're not on your side. Those are the three that I think of right now that are universal triggers for a proper anger response. Now, I want to talk about my own experience in learning how to harness the power of anger. I have participated in this group, <clears throat> the, the Real Courses. It's out of Boca Raton, Florida. I highly recommend it. If I remember, I'll put the link down below. I highly recommend it. This is like a whole weekend that we spend together and we do deep emotional work as a group. There's 20 students and maybe 50 to 75 assistants. And everything is geared to helping the students move through whatever blockages they have so that emotions can move. Emotion, it's got to move to be healthy. And so um, one of the things that we deal with in the weekend is anger. And it's very, it's very loud. It's very intense. We involve the whole body into it. It's very safe. It's very contained. But I noticed for myself that I found when I was angry at, about something uh, that I also mixed it with sadness and I would dilute my own anger with sadness, with compassion. And I see that <laughs> with clients all the time. They're, they had a hard life, blah, blah, blah. It's all compassion. And I say even compassion dilutes the anger. And in this workshop, I was given permission. Just let her rip. Let it go for it 100% without diluting it with anything. And it was an eye-opening experience. I felt like a pilot light was lit within me so that I had access to that level of passion that I did not have before. My pilot light had been out. And so I was much more passive and permissive and accommodating, which in and of themselves are not bad qualities, but I did them to a fault. And by igniting my pilot light, I feel like I have much more healthy, appropriate balance in my life. I have good boundaries because my pilot light is lit. And I like to say that if, if you go on a safari to Africa and you're camping for the night, how do you keep the lions and the predators out of the camp? You light a fire. Fire keeps predators away. I've noticed that when I'm with a lit pilot light within me, people don't mess with me. And if they do, I can appropriately growl. I can appropriately maintain my boundaries. I can appropriately be firm. I did say growl, didn't I? But it's, uh, it's all right. You know what? I've seen puppies. When you feed the puppies, they're part of the same litter. They growl at each other. They're, you know, they're doing the dominance thing. It doesn't mean the puppies don't love each other. They do. Growling is just what dogs do. Anger is just something that we do. It belongs in our repertoire is what I'm saying. And we need to be in charge of it. We need to have our anger and not be had by it in the same way with all of our feelings. Thank you for your attention and your interest, because I am a student of what it is to be a human being. I want to get really good at it. I want to navigate my life with wisdom and acceptance. And I wish that for you, too. Okay. Peace out.